So uh, a week ago when we were covering the, uh, everybody was covering the whole story about apparently Russians paying the Taliban, the Taliban to, to kill Americans and that the Russians had bounties on Americans' heads. I'm like, uh, no, this is not true. And, you know, a lot of people said that, well, hey, you know, obviously it's true. The New York Times reported on it. Yeah, the New York Times is, a, they're, they're lying ass bastards. I mean, they're, I mean, they, they took Dick Cheney's words. And Dick Cheney called the New York Times prior to going out to press conferences before the Iraq war and said, oh, I need you to say this because we're, it's a, the Iraq war, uh, weapons of mass destruction. And the New York Times was like, oh, sure. And so like, they basically repeated those points, right? So uh, Rand Paul has, he's been known as this uh, anti-interventionalist Republican, like libertarian Republican, like his dad, Ron Paul. And basically, um, what what he's saying is, why are we in the Middle East? Why are we there? Can we get out? There's no point on being in the Middle East. It makes no sense. And I agree with him. I, I've got nothing but agreement with him on that one. I think he's completely right. We don't need to be in the Middle East. And to anyone who says we do, you're lying to yourself. You, you're, uh, you're uh, absolutely lying. I mean, seriously. So, um, Rand Paul makes this speech uh, when they were voting for the NDAA. Right. And uh, he basically rips apart the Senate. And look, I've got my criticisms around Paul. He votes with Trump every single time. I'm, I'm very concerned about the president. He's doing this and I'm not sure I want to vote for it. <laughs> like that's him going, OK, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Um, that's my impression of a dog. So if there are any dogs listening and you think that's a dog, that's me. Or if you hate that impression, I'm sorry. Right. So anyway. Uh, it's just my humor in a serious situation. So we've been in Afghanistan for 19 years in Afghanistan. And there's no point in being there. We got Osama bin Laden, not in Afghanistan. The original mission of going to get him failed. And uh, Rand Paul pretty much points that out. And um, I just thought I'd play this clip and uh, stop it here and there. Uh, I think it is a good clip to share. And, um, you know, I, I, you just got to watch this. I mean, it, it just... Let's hear old Rand Paul out. Let's hear him out. Mr. President, Senator Udall and I are pleased to present a bipartisan amendment that will finally end America's longest war. Our amendment will finally and completely end the war in Afghanistan. Over 4,000 Americans have died in Afghanistan and over 20,000 have been wounded. It's time to bring our soldiers home. I supported going into Afghanistan originally. Had I been in Congress at that time, I would have voted in favor. But the people that attacked us on 9-11 have all been killed or captured. Most of the people fighting us today are their successors or children or the children of their children. In fact, we now have soldiers who were born after 9-11 serving in Afghanistan. The cycle... So, so before I let that continue, I mean, just think of that. 4,000 troops have died. 20,000 have been wounded. And most of the people that attacked us are killed or retired or arrested or God knows where, right? <laughs> and we're still in this war. And he's pointing out like, come on, guys. Now we're fighting those successors of those who attacked us. We're now fighting their children, their grandchildren, their children's children, their aunts, their uncles or their uncles. Right. Because the Middle East, they, you know, they it, it it's insane that we're still there. And then we've got like poor 18 year old kids who were born after 9-11, after who don't even know what they're going for. All they know is, you know, I want to be patriotic and I want to go fight. That's what I want to do. I want to go fight. But we have them fighting in this war for no reason. Everyone's gone. So let's, let's hear what else he's got to say. The war shows no sign of ending. The war shows no sign of ending. It is not sustainable to keep fighting in Afghanistan generation after generation. We've been fighting in Afghanistan for so long that our youngest soldiers fighting there weren't even born at the time. We have spent about a trillion dollars to establish an Afghan government, a government that is rife with corruption and dysfunction. We spent more to rebuild Afghanistan than the Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe after World War II. We've built infrastructure in Afghanistan 
and then watch to deteriorate and watch the Afghans be unable to even maintain the infrastructure we built for them, and they ask us for more money to maintain the infrastructure. Meanwhile, our roads and our bridges crumble here at home. So there you go. I, I, I've really got to compliment Rand Paul. I mean, he's actually saying that. Like, guys, we're paying $2 trillion to go to war in Afghanistan. And you're going to hear more. Right? He says about a trillion, but it's actually $2 trillion. And he's like, we're paying for their infrastructure, their roads, their tunnels, their bridges, you know, their, their airways, their, their, um, their, waterway, their, their waterways, their bridge. You know, I said bridges, but just anything that's infrastructure, we're paying for that out of the American tax dollars. And then the Afghan government can't even maintain it. I mean, the, the Afghanistan government, we pay to establish it. Then we pay for their infrastructure. We can't even pay for our infrastructure here at home. Everything is de dilapidated or, or, or whatever you call it. And then we have people like Trump running who say, I'm going to fix it. And then he, all he wants to do is privatize it. But like we're spending all all of our money on Afghanistan's infrastructure and nothing here at home. We're still suffering. We are. Interesting. Interesting how that's still going on. As we rebuild the infrastructure in Afghanistan, one example, several years ago, we reportedly hired a local security consultant to help secure the roads at a cost of $1 million per year. But according to the report by the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, American officials came to suspect that the money was being funneled to insurgents to stage attacks on our infrastructure to justify the security contract. So our money was going to a guy who was paying insurgents to pretend to attack him so he could provide security for our, our infra their infrastructure. It's crazy. We spent $43 million on a natural gas gas station. Guess how many vehicles in Afghanistan run on natural gas? Zero. The gas station, you can't even find it. My staff went there to see if the money had been spent. They couldn't go there because it was too unsafe. Now the report is the gas station's been abandoned. $43 million. We spent nearly $80 million on a luxury hotel. Why? Before I let it go there. We're giving a guy money for security purposes to protect our, our, our embassy and our, their, their infrastructure. And then he's, he's paying insurgents, people to go attack him and attack our infrastructure and our troops. So then he'd be like, oh, oh, we need security. We need security. We're literally paying millions of dollars a year. So he can be protected, but then he's now going and paying insurgents with that money. So they attack him, and then he can turn around and go, oh, see, I need security, America. Can you, pro can you provide me with security, please, please, please? And then we're paying, what, $40 million on natural gas in Afghanistan to build a gas station that's not recognizable. It's destroyed. It's abandoned. And it's completely unsafe to even send a senator's staff. Forty million dollars on a on a gas station and natural gas. Zero Afghanistan vehicles run on natural gas. And then here we go. A, a million dollars for a security guard that attacks, has people attack him and our troops. And then turns around and be like, we need more security, even though I'm pretending that I need it because I'm the one hiring the people to attack us. Wow, and now $80 million to build a luxury hotel in Kabul. Let's hear him out on that. The American taxpayer building luxury hotels in Kabul, guess what? The contractor ran off with the money. It's a skeleton, and people, Taliban now, are said to climb up into the structure and shoot down at our embassy. What kind of foolhardy nature of, of government is it that we continue to stay there so so 80 million dollars going to the afghans so that they can then build a luxury hotel in couple why are we paying that why 
why are we paying a luxury hotel in the Middle East? And then the contractor runs away with the $80 million. And then now the Taliban's going, whoops, now we have more buildings to shoot down at the U.S. Embassy. We got Americans in there, foreign diplomats in there. What are we doing? We just threw away $80 million and thousands of lives. Because now the, the, uh, the Taliban now has more ammo on them. You know what they could do? They could, they could put, make that into a makeshift building or probably build it themselves because they got money from the Afghan government. Store weapons in there and at the top put snipers up there. To shoot down at them. At, at the troops of the U.S. and at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. Are you kidding me? Like, I, and he says, what kind of fools are we as a government that we're allowing this? We're just throwing away money here. Quite frankly, the government does that all the time, but I'm, come on. These are just a few of the many examples that have had us spending more than we spent in Europe on the Marshall Plan. So we continue to pour good money after bad into Afghanistan, hoping that the outcome will somehow change. Hoping that maybe the first 20 years will produce better results than the last 20 years did. This NDAA, this defense authorization that we're debating here in the Senate, even has a sense of the Senate in it opposing a precipitous withdrawal from Afghanistan. We've been there for 20 years. How can we characterize withdrawal after 20 years after we defeated the enemy as precipitous? It's crazy. The American people say, come home, and this is your chance. Many people have said we should end the war. Today you get to vote. Are you for staying in Afghanistan for another generation? Are you for continuing a war that has lost its purpose? Today we get to vote. Up or down, are you for the war or against the war? So there we go. We always say, come home from Afghanistan, get us out of there, stop using my tax dollars to take care of the Afghan government. And we don't do it as the, they don't do it as the government. Why are we there? We've been there 20 years. The purpose is gone. It, I, why are we keeping the defense contractors and the military industrial complex rich. Why? It makes no sense. Let's get out. We don't need to be there. It makes no sense. They say, oh, well, let's continue. And maybe there'll be a purpose. Maybe there'll be a purpose. Yeah, to kill more troops. Waste more tax dollars. All that money you're putting into the IRS and you're paying your taxes on April 15th on a normal basis and in June and later in the pandemic times, all going to the Afghan government. To defense contractors. So now they had a choice. Up or down. Do you support getting out of the war? But then there's a, an amendment to say we oppose any withdrawal from the, from the war. Any. Zero. How? How do you support that? I have an answer. It's called you're a neoliberal, technocratic, corporate, Republican, and Democratic hack. That's what you are. Because the reason you want to stay there is I got to get myself rich. Because the way to do that is get the defense contractors who donate to me. Get like Raytheon, Halliburton, and Boeing. Get them rich. And then... And, and the people that make the bullets, the people that make the missiles, the people that make the drones, the bombs, the, the, the armored vehicles, the armored plates, all of that, right? Get them rich, get the military industrial complex rich, and by the way, then they donate to me, my campaign. And then after I'm out of Congress, I can go serve on boards that serve the war purpose. This is stupid. I mean... Let's continue on. The war still have a mission. The American people know better. They are ready to declare victory and come home. It's why President Trump's message resonated with so many. He said it's time to come home, and the people agreed. Not only is it time to end the war and focus on our needs at home, but it's time to reward those who fought the battle. 
We're spending $50 billion a year over there. In the savings in the first year, we will provide, Senator Udall and I will provide in our bill, a $2,500 bonus for anyone who has been deployed in the long war on terror. That's a pretty good bonus and our soldiers deserve it, but they also deserve to come home because there's no military mission left. Instead of spending another $50 billion in Afghanistan next year, let's give some of that money to our soldiers who fought the war, and let's begin saving some money from the, from the massive deficit that we face here at home. This is the Senate's chance to show that it's time to declare victory. It's time to come home. I urge support for my amendment, and I also remind senators, this is your chance to vote to end a war. Thank you, Mr. President. So here we go. Here we go. We got $50 billion. $50 billion. That's almost as much as um, Bloomberg has. Michael Bloomberg. He spent about a billion dollars on his campaign. He's like, it's okay. I own, I own the Bloomberg terminals. I invest in other companies. I'll get that back. Literally, that's $50 billion a year. And you complain about Medicare for all. That costs $42 trillion. Actually, $32 trillion. The current health care system costs $47 trillion. It's a sixth of our economy. The war in Afghanistan takes way more out of our economy. So he says there, how about we bring our troops home and, and, and we'll give them a $2,500 bonus for those who who served any time during the war on terror from 2000 or 2001 to today. 2001 to today. I agree. I agree. Give it to them. My uncle was a Marine. Give him that. How about we provide housing for all the veterans? How about jobs for all? How about forgive all their student debt? How about their medical debt? How about we fix the freaking VA? Because right now the VA sucks. We can't, there's a lot of people who, they can't get appointments. They can't get proper health care. They can't get proper specialists. We got people that don't know what they're doing in the VA. I'm telling you, how many times do we have to say, let's get out of Afghanistan. And he says, let's declare victory. Victory for what? For what? Like, we got the enemy, supposedly, and we got Osama. And some believe that we didn't, if you're a conspiracy theorist, like family members I have. What, what victory are we claiming? We've killed 4,000 troops, wounded 20,000. This weekend, a, a 20-year-old kid died in a rollover accident. Yet they don't care. They don't actually care. All that money could go in to helping the American people Fixing our infrastructure, fixing our healthcare system, our education system, creating a universal basic income, helping the veterans, taking 100,000 veterans off the streets and putting them in homes and schools and jobs. But no, no, all they want to do is fund an endless offensive illegal war and it's time to get out.